I am Dr. Sandeep Sharma and in this small session, in this small video, I shall be talking about what are the small little things you can do when you are preparing neonatology for any super specialty exam in pediatrics, be it fellowship, be it need super specialty, be it your INI super specialty. So whatever you are preparing, keep preparing, but tweak your preparation according to some suggestions that I will be making. So let us begin. So first of all, what is the importance of neonatology in super specialty exam? Neonatology, if you look at the past papers, you will find that each need super specialty exam has about 10 to 12 questions on an average. And a similar pattern is expected to be there, even despite there is being a change in pattern in the new super specialty pattern, uh, we can expect about 8 to 10 questions at least from neonatology. Uh, significant high quality questions are asked in the specialty part where you need to read Ames protocol a bit more in details. You need to read certain topics in Cloherty and Avery more in details compared to what you read for need super specialty. And occasional questions of neonatology are also asked in general part. So actual weightage is a bit more than what it seems when you look at the uh, paper syllabus which has been given to you in prospectus. And neonatology is a relatively less scoring part in super specialty exam. It's a very paradoxical thing because what will happen is that if the questions are being asked on congenital heart diseases or con questions are being asked on syndromes, provided you have not omitted out any uh, important syndrome, you will find that questions on syndromes, questions on congenital heart diseases, they are relatively easier to answer. In neonatology, questions are not only asked only from neonatal jaundice, neonatal sepsis and necrotizing enterocolitis. They are also asked from fetal assessment, they are asked from fetal surgeries and if you look at the uh, recently held need super speciality, there were questions even from neonatal surgeries also. They were asking about details of uh, surgery in congenital diaphragmatic hernia, details of surgery in tracheoesophageal fistula. These are the things which we don't prepare that often. And so overall neonatology, the strike rate is much less than what you will commonly anticipate even for the best of students. So if you prepare neonatology well, it actually gives you an advantage over others who have not prepared it to uh, the satisfaction of what the examiners want. So what are the resources that you should be using? First of all, I'll be talking about need super speciality. Essential resources include obviously Nelson 21st edition and AIMS neonatal protocol. Without reading these two resources, I don't think you should, uh, you are well prepared when it comes to neonatology in super speciality. Then we have semi-essential resource called as Cloherty. When I say semi-essential, it does not mean that it is optional. Semi-essential means that Cloherty does not need to be read cover to cover. The initial few chapters and few chapters and some chapters in the middle, you can omit out. But certain important things like congenital infections. Certain topics like, um, for example, pain assessment. If you look at the AIMS protocol, they only talk about PIPP scale for pain assessment. But if you look at past papers, especially INI SS also, and sometimes in NEAT SS also, other pain assessment tools in neonatology, they are also asked. There have been questions on um, new scale. There have been questions on uh, and pass scale. So those scales have not been discussed in AIMS neonatology, and so. Reading those scales, those additional things from Cloherty is, is a must. In general, congenital infections, you have to read Cloherty. And that is why I say it is semi-essential. You don't need to read it cover to cover. And third is optional. If you, you have time and if you can devote a bit of resources, selected review articles you need to read, particularly related to neonatal sepsis. What is the latest data in the world? What is the latest data in India? You need to read about them. And then neonatal surgeries also, if you can find some time. Then we have INI SS. If you see for NEAT SS, I have not talked about every, if, even if uh, all the interviews you look at of most of the toppers, you will find that every nobody had the time and frankly, for NEAT SS, every is not essential. You can still get a top five rank without touching every. That doesn't mean I'm uh, discouraging you. I'm just saying have a balanced approach for NEAT super speciality. In INI SS, the essential resources will be same, Nelson and Eames protocol. Semi-essential will be Cloherty, but the number of topics will be more based upon what are the what is the pattern asked in super speciality of INISS. Past Ames SS papers, you can have a look to get a better idea. And optional are selected topics from every. What are the topics you should be reading from every? I'll be coming in some time. And certain review articles are important. So every is important for INISS but it is not important for need super speciality. That is, this is the one take home point I want to emphasize. And secondly, AIMS protocols you have to read irrespective of which exam you are sitting in. 
Now, what are the key areas to focus in neonatology? If you look at past papers in NEET SS, you will find there is a pattern. A lot of questions, consistently questions are asked from fetal assessment. There are questions asked from high-risk pregnancies. These are two areas which we don't read very often uh, in our three years of residency. So all these scores which you used to read in NEET PG, in a slightly you know more pediatric oriented manner, you need to read for uh, super specialty exams as well. So all those Bishop score, all those fetal assessment methods, amniocentesis, cardio, uh, chorionic villus biopsy, sensitivity specificity for antenatal diagnosis of various things, you need to do them. And fetal assessment, partogram, fetal demise, these topics you need to read at least some part from uh, Nelson and certain parts are not covered well in Nelson, you can take the help of Flohertie in them. And high risk pregnancies, especially twin pregnancies, and um, maternal preeclampsia, they are very frequently asked in neat super speciality. Secondly, terminologies. What is the term? What is pre perinatal period? What is a late preterm period? Easy things, but we often forget they are asked sometimes in your exam. Then, neonatal respiratory disorders are very important. If you look at past four neat SS papers, there was always at least one to two questions asked from apnea. Sometimes they asked about drug of choice, then they asked about half-life or serum therapeutic levels of caffeine citrate, then they asked about TTN, there was a x-ray uh, once asked related to uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, once they asked about transient equipment of newborn. So neonatal respiratory disorder is very, very important. At least two questions you can expect in any paper from this topic. So not only tachyvalid disorders, which includes your HMD and uh, TTN and mass, but also the apnea related disorders you need to read. Then neonatal screening is very important. Again, tricky thing, in case you are uh, unable to find from a single source, multiple sources need to be consulted, ROP screening, congenital hypothyroidism, autoacoustic emission, BERA, when to do, how to do, advantage, disadvantage, controversies, latest guidelines, you have to read them in details. ROP, there will be different guidelines given in Nelson, different in Cloherty, different in Ames protocol, follow the ones which are there in Ames protocol. Then necrotizing enterocolitis consistently asked every year. So read it inside out. Drugs used in common neonatal disorders, again, asked in details. Every alternate year, there will be question asked related to arrhythmias. Like once there was a, uh, some years back, there was a question where they asked about the pro-arrhythmogenic potential in anti-arrhythmic drugs used in pediatric population. So you need to read details of those drugs as well. So drugs used in common neonatal disorders, you need to read them particularly drugs used in arrhythmias, drugs used in specific disorders like caffeine and theophylline, drugs which have, a, uh, which have multiple uses. IVIG is the drug of choice in which condition. Completely you should know. The, you should know about uh, what are the specific drugs of choice in various pediatric diseases, pertussis which is the drug of choice, uh, mycoplasma infection which is the drug of choice and so on. So this is the way Along with whatever preparation you are doing, you should be focusing and in neonatal pertussis and other things are, are pediatric disorders. But even in neonatology, what is the first line therapy for neonatal sepsis? What is the second line therapy for neonatal sepsis according to uh, what we follow in India, the Indian guidelines? So you need to read them in details. Then neonatal jaundice, again it's an evergreen topic and NRP is very important. 7th edition, 8th edition, not many changes, but whatever small little changes are there, you need to read them. And related to NRP, neonatal birth injuries are also very frequently asked. Neonatal resuscitation program is something you cannot go wrong. If you are asked a question, you have to answer it. You are not answering it means your uh, pediatric training has been incomplete in a way. So these are the areas where you should be focusing and as I just told you before also, pain scores in units is another area often missed, but very important for your exam. That doesn't mean other topics are less important, but you have to read these topics in details, right? And although I have not mentioned here, but uh, in case of especially INISS if you are targeting and also other exams, congenital infections become a very important area. And common respiratory disorder management is very important. Respiratory management in neonatal diseases. But when I say respiratory management, I basically mean that when should you be using a NIV? When you should be intubating the patient? What are the indications and contraindications of high frequency oscillometric ventilation? What are the types of ECMO? Venovenous ECMO, venoarterial ECMO, which is to be used where? So these topics are very important additionally in INI super specialty exams. So 
don't miss out these topics when you prepare. And lastly, uh, a question I keep getting asked, sir, if I have to read every, what should I be reading? If you have to read every, there are certain topics which are important. Uh, first of all, it is not essential for neat SS, I've already told you. Selected areas which I would be reading if I am in your place will be neonatal respiratory therapy. There is a complete chapter on that. Lengthy chapter, boring chapter, a bit overwhelming, but spend some time and if you are preparing for INISS, certainly you will be benefiting in actual difficult papers. There are, there are always one or two difficult questions related to neonatal respiratory therapy asked in INISS. If you look at past AIMS super specialty pa papers also, there were questions asked from that. Then non-immune high drops, you need to read from every. It's very conceptual, very nice, much better than what is given in Nelson or Kroherty. Disorders of sexual differentiation, there are flow charts given over there, there are tables given over there, development part, extremely important. This will be useful even in your general pediatrics part if you can spare time. All of these are if you can spare time. Reading every without reading Nelson or uh, AIMS protocol is playing with fire, don't do that. Then prenatal drug exposure, there's a, a complete chapter on that. Focus on the teratogens, focus on fetal alcohol syndrome, fetal hydantoin syndrome, very nicely explained. Direct questions are put from there. And then surgical disorders of the chest and airways, again very important. Uh, some of the recent even uh, neat SS questions were indirectly asked from uh, text given over there. And lastly, any other topic not adequately covered in Cloherty, you can give a try if you can find it better in Avery's neonatology. But Avery is our, you know, optional thing to be read. In the end, balanced approach will work. But whenever you are doing balanced approach, whatever specialty you are doing, start with defining your resources, identifying the topics, short topics or frequently asked topics, do them inside out, have a fair bit of information about the other topics also, and rare topics, give a glancery reading or take out key points from them. Eventually, not everybody is going to get all the questions right. Even topper will get a score of 85 to 90 percent. Remaining 10 to 15 percent, even the topper will apply. Right? So focus hard and prepare smartly. Thank you very much. I'll soon be back with another video targeting one particular aspect of pediatric super specialty exams. Thank you.